morning. Happy Mother's Day to all our beautiful women. We give praise and glory to God for each and every one of you. Now here we are. It is May 10th, 2020. And sometimes the weather isn't uh, letting us know that it's May and the flowers are everywhere. Yesterday morning, um, we woke up at least here in northern Vermont, to um, snow covering everything. And it was so beautiful. And, you know, we just sort of found ourselves saying, wow, Lord, you know, the winter wants to hold on. And so my daughter called in the morning, Lori, and said, I answered the phone, she said, um, Merry Christmas, Mom. And we just had a good laugh. But when you think about that, the concept of, Mother's Day of children being birthed and birthing children. Um, it happens at all times of the year and in all situations and circumstances. Um, the blizzards of winter and the heat waves of summer. Uh, we all came into this world, most of us, at a time that wasn't all that convenient necessarily. The middle of the night, in the middle of a snowstorm, in the middle of a heat wave. Uh, but we're here and we thank God for that. Thank God for the life that he's given you and the mother that he's given. Praise be to God. So today, this is a message for women, children, people. And I pray that God will give us ears to hear and a heart to receive what it is that he would have for us individually and corporately as the body of Christ. Prophesy ears to hear and hearts that are open. Everybody would come away with something that will minister to you at the point of your need. Because that's what the word of God does. It meets us where we're at. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're praying continuing to pray through this season as we are going from the Passover time at Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, and ascension through the time when we will celebrate the um, new freshness that's being poured out which we are believing is coming. And so keep praying because this nation and this world is in need. We continue to declare and decree that the coronavirus is flatlined. We continue to pray and decree a wall of fire, firewall of protection around everyone and everything border to border as the Lord gave to us to do. And we're believing that this season leading up to Pentecost is powerful. Remember that that word Pentecost, Pente is 50. So it's 50 days. And this is a time to be in prayer for our nation, expectant. Now, I was recently reminded as I've been listening to some of the um, prophets speaking, I was reminded of a vision that I had where I was going along a narrow mountain, a high mountain, and um, on a very narrow ledge facing the mountain. And in this vision, I just was doing it for a very long time. With my right hand, I was holding the child, which I understand to be the ministry that God's called me to. And um, But I just kept edging. And it was only, the ledge was only about as wide as my own feet. And I'm facing against the mountain. So I continued and continued and continued mm -hmm. until suddenly I came to a place where there was a wide precipice, an opening I couldn't step across and certainly not with the hand of the child I was holding but I, I couldn't even on my own and I just stood there 
waiting, waiting for the Lord. I knew that he had a plan and a purpose. And suddenly from the other side, which was wide, it was about six to six to eight feet, maybe wide, um, a hand reached from the other side and took my left hand. And when this happened, I just stepped and I stepped on something that was solid, though I couldn't see it, and he brought me through to the other side. And then we continued. And, and there's more to this vision, but I'm saying this because we're in a time where we're reminded of Israel leaving Egypt and eventually coming to the, remember they came to the Red Sea. And there, there they are, their back is against the wall. But the Lord made a way. The Lord made a way. He gave the authority and the rod to Moses, and Moses extended that rod of authority. But God is the one who opened the way and made the way. Um, the enemy is, you know, pursuing Pharaoh's army. And the there they are between a rock and a hard place, I guess you could say with no place to go, but God made a way. I woke up yesterday morning singing that song. My God, you'll make a way where there seems to be no way. I believe that in this hour that we're in, this is what we, as we continue to pray and cry out to God and declare and decree his word and his promises that God, God is going to make a way in this nation and for the nations of the world and Israel, um, God is going to make a way where there seems to be no way. But we have to do our part, like Moses used the rod of authority, and our part is to pray. To pray, to declare his word, to stand in awe and be expectant, because our God is faithful. Praise be to God. just want to say again, Happy Mother's Day. I pray this will sink into our hearts. You know, let's just start with placing our right hand upon our heart and asking the Lord to align us. Lord, align our heartbeat with your heartbeat for such a time as this. Give us ears to hear and a heart that marches through this land by your spirit, led of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God to the tune of your heartbeat. We thank you and praise you. Recalibrate us, Lord, to a perfect alignment with your heartbeat. We thank you and praise you and glorify your name. And I thank you, Lord, for fresh release of anointing this day, that we will be, the anointing breaks the yoke of bondage. We will be freed by the word to come forth into the fullness of the liberty that was won for us in Jesus' name. We're careful to give you all the glory and honor, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory and honor and praise be unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The title of today's message is A Life Laid Down. Thank you, Jesus. If you would turn in your Bibles, please, to 1 John 3.16. Um, and in 1 John 3.16, it says, By this we know love. Praise God. Uh, I hear the pages turning. Uh, Pastor Jeremy and Pastor Jody are here with me this morning. And uh, praise God. Um, we're expecting... Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. By this, I'm in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. Praise God. Goes on to say we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's also look at John 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, 
that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you are the example for us of love. Jesus truly is the example of love. God so loved, and, and Father God, God loved the world, so loved the world that he gave Jesus his only begotten son, that whomsoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, the, on this Mother's Day, my heart was reminded that Mother is a beautiful example also of a life laid down. Think about it for a moment. The yielding of her own body for her developing child. And it doesn't end there. It's nine months and, and it isn't the most comfortable process. Um, there are things, you know, it's wonderful and joyous and God's plan and purpose and how we all got here. But it is really a laying down of one's life for another person the person that is developing in the womb. And babies, well, it doesn't end there, as we well know. Um, human babies are the most dependent of all creatures. <laughs> Unlike birds of the air where, you know, they are in the nest, it's a short period, they fledge, they get their feathers, and basically they're out of the nest and they're off um, being birds. And most animals, even those who go through a whole season or a time, it's a short season as compared to humans and human babies. It's a, a long time between the conception of a child and the maturity of a child and growing up. And praise be to God, it's a long time and a, a long, wonderful opportunity an opportunity for patience and training and teaching and a lot of love, a lot of crying out to God for help. The truth is that somebody did this for you and somebody did this for me. Somebody laid down their life that you and I might be formed in the womb and that person is called mother. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And we know that we wouldn't be here today if it hadn't been for the person called mother. Let's just take a moment right here. Let's say it together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my mother. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my mother. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Someone called mother carried and birthed us, and someone called mother nurtured and taught and trained us. And they're not always the same person, but someone did, and today we honor those we call mother. I'm gonna look at the concept of honor and talk about it a little bit. Let's look at Ephesians chapter six, verse two. just had the information that we just spoke about. Someone laid down their life that we might be formed in the womb. Someone birthed us and someone nurtured us because we would not be able to survive if that were the case. That alone would be enough to honor the person who did this for us. That alone would be enough, sufficient. The Word of God says, speaks by saying, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And then in verse 2, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you. You may live long on the earth. You know, that first verse 
speaks of children obeying. <laughs> it's an interesting thing. Sometimes um, people don't have the right concept of children obeying. We have a window of time to train our children in our home and you know, as parents, as their parents, as their mothers and fathers. And children have a responsibility to obey their parents um, when their children growing up in their parents' home. But sometimes adults, adult parents, think that their adult children should still be um, obeying them as children, as their children. They'll always be our children, but when they become adults, they, they no longer are under the authority of our household to obey us in the same way. Um, and one time I had some older parents come to see me and they were rather distraught and they said, Pastor, our children won't obey us. So I said to them, they were believers and um, I said, well, how old are your children? Their children were all adults, children of their own. And I said, well, perhaps you have a misunderstanding of your children supposing to obey. They were trying to tell their adult children how to live. But we never outgrow. And of course, sometimes it's, it's good to seek out our parents' wisdom about things and what the God has to say to us through them as adults. But in verse 2, it talks about honor your father and mother, um, which is the first commandment with promise. And the word honor, the word honor is something we are to do all of the days of our life. How do we honor our mother? How do we honor our father? Well, ultimately, we esteem them highly. We esteem them highly in our heart. We esteem them and we respect them. Now, we might not always agree with them, but we esteem them highly. And as I said earlier, if the only thing that they ever did, that your mother ever did for you, was carry you in her womb and nurture you through your earliest childhood, that's a reason to highly esteem. And when we do, we actually honor God. So he says to honor, to honor, to highly esteem, because we also are honoring God in that. And then there's another little piece to this in verse 3, that it may be well with you. I think sometimes that it isn't well with us, it isn't well with us in our soul, because we wrestle with things that God doesn't want us to wrestle with, just wants us to esteem and respect and turn things over to him. When we do, there's peace in our heart. And it, there's another part of that promise that we might live well, that things might be well with us and we might live long on the earth. Praise God. So honor, and today is a day to honor, to honor our mothers. Praise God. And as I said before, that's not always the same person. The person that birthed us is not always the same person that nurtured us or even raised us or trained us. Praise God. One of the things that stands out to me is how Jesus honored his mother and his father. Of course, this is just coming to me, so I'm going to add it. When, when he was... 12 years old and they went up to the temple for the um, Passover time, he went into the left, stayed behind in the temple. And his parents didn't realize that he wasn't with them when they were returning home. And they were three days into their journey. And suddenly the Mary must have been with the women and Joseph with the men and they came together and realized Jesus wasn't with them. When they went back, one of the things that has always stood out to me is that, yes, he said to them, do you not know that I must be about my father's business? And he was talking about um, Father God. But he honored them. 
He honored them. He, he wasn't fully matured, and he honored them. And he went, not only went with them, but you hear very little about him until suddenly he's being baptized in the River Jordan by, um, the, by John, the Apostle John, and the disciple. And what is this about? He is, um, goes with them and honors them and continues to grow up and mature until it's his time, till it's his time. And when we think about that, where I want to go with this next is found in, you can turn to John 19. See, Jesus honored his mother with his dying breath. Let's take a look at that, John 19, starting with 26. <clears throat> Start with verse 25. There stood by the cross, Jesus is hanging on the cross, Dying for the sins of the whole world, bearing your sin, my sin, and the sins of the whole world. That whomever might believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And in the midst of all of the sin and sickness and disease that he, was, he took upon himself, he still honored his mother, even with his dying words. See, he left nothing unfinished. So it says, in starting with verse 25, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were accomplished, all things were accomplished, he left nothing undone. He honored his mother. And then very soon, verse 30, he said it is finished, bowed his head, and gave up his spirit. But he left nothing unfinished here even to the provision for his mother, honoring her in his dying words, praise be to God. Um, this is an example for us again. You know, as, as a young child, learning that certain days were set aside for special times um, and special opportunities to honor, I presented my mama on one Mother's Day, a big bouquet of dandelions, which, you know, she received as roses. <laughs> In other words, they were as beautiful to her and as precious because her child presented them to her. And she stood smiling and just enjoying the fragrance of the dandelions. And it provoked a question in me, Mama, happy Mother's Day. And then, very quickly, Mama, when's Children's Day? And my mother said, oh, my dear daughter, Children's Day is every day. Well, on that particular day, because I was a child and I thought like a child and I talked like a child and I acted like a child, it didn't quite add up for me, and it took a long time for me to really fully understand that. It took me growing up, probably becoming a parent, a mother myself, to recognize that every day in the, in the day of a child is ch Children's Day, and how blessed and fortunate, praise be to God. But So I, th I thought about that and how true that is. Thank you, Lord. You know, when Jesus was about to lay down his life for the sins of the world, he spoke to his disciples of their sorrow because he wouldn't physically be with them as he had been 
the past three and a half years. But he also spoke of the joy that they would know because of his great act of love. Jesus likened that, the sorrow that his disciples were feeling because he was going to go to the cross and then return to the Father. He likened it to a woman giving birth. There are quite a lot of things in scripture that are likened to this as an example. But let's turn to John 16, verses 16 through 21. Jesus speaks to his disciples and he says, A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me, because I go to the Father. Then some of his disciples said amongst themselves, What is this that he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he says a little while? We do not know what he is saying. Now Jesus knew that they desired to ask him, and he said to them, Are you inquiring among yourselves about what I said? A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Most assuredly I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice and you will be sorrowful but your sorrow will be turned into joy. And then he goes on to explain in verse 21 and 22, a woman when she is in labor has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Hallelujah. Somebody did this for you. Somebody did this for me. Praise be to God. Let's give thanks to the Lord for the mother who bore us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The mother that nurtured us in our infancy and childhood when we were unable to care for ourselves and would have perished. We would have perished. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Psalm 139, 13. Please, let's turn there. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Dear, ask if I needed the light on. Most weeks we've had the sun just shining through the door. I'm going to have some hot water with some lemon in it. So if you make a little face, it's sour, but it's really nice on my throat. Mm -hmm. It's sour. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 139, 13 speaks of our, the relationship of our being formed in our mother's wombs. Hmm. Father God did this. You, you, this is you, Father. You formed me. You formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. Hmm. You covered me. Praise be to God. You know that Covered is better translated interwoven. That is, the white bones, the blue veins, the red arteries are all woven together. The thought is repeated in verse 15 where wrought means embroidered with various colors. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Think about what scripture says about us. We are the workmanship of his hands. We are his masterpiece, each and every one of us, his masterpiece. 
I love what it says here in the kingdom dynamics. From the moment of conception, there is a progression of development that continues through adulthood. God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. A progression of development. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just think about that. Think about that concept. We are the workmanship of his hands. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. How precious. How precious we are. How grateful we are to be to him who formed us in our mother's womb, caused us to come forth at the right moment. Yes, as we said, you know, he's coming back. And that might not be the most convenient moment either, according to scripture. No man knows the day or the hour. Could be any time. We know we can read the signs of the times and the seasons, but we know not the day or the hour. And so it's good to be prepared, like a woman who knows that she's about to give birth, but doesn't know the time, and it probably isn't going to be the most convenient of times but she's ready, perhaps has the bag of things necessary to take with her to the hospital or whatever. In other words, we have to be ready because we know not the day or the hour that the Lord is coming back. And it probably could be, as he says, like a thief in the night, you know, when you least expect. So you could be anywhere. You could be at the beach. Suddenly, you're... You weren't in labor, and suddenly you are. The, that moment has come. The moment is upon. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to bring forth something today. I'd like us to turn to 1 Kings chapter 3. The Lord gave this message, and it's inter an interesting part of scripture here, and of course all scripture is given for reproof and correcting and teaching. Praise be to God. So I'm going to read the account and then I want to share about it. And I'll start by sharing that the first time I ever heard this account in scripture, I was a young girl. I spent a lot of time thinking about this and all the implications of what is spoken here. I'll talk about that a little bit afterward. Now, it's 1 Kings, and it's chapter 3, starting with verse 16. Now, two women who were harlots came to the king and stood before him. And one woman said, O oh my Lord, this woman and I dwell in the same house, and I gave birth while she was in the house. Then it happened the third day after I had given birth that this woman also gave birth and we were together. No one was with us in the house except the two of us in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. So she arose in the middle of the night, took my son from my side while your maidservant slept and laid him in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to nurse my son, there he was dead. But when I had examined him in the morning, indeed, he was not my son whom I had born. Then the other woman said, No, but the living one is my son, and the dead one is your son. And the first woman said, No, but the dead one is your son, and the living one is my son. Thus they spoke before the king. And the king said, the one says, this is my son who lives, and your son is the dead one. And the other says, no, but your son is the dead one, and my son is the living one. Then the king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king, and the king said, divide the living child in two, and give half to one and half to the other. Then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king. For she yearned with compassion for her son, and she said, O oh my Lord, give her the living child, 
and by no means kill him. But the other said, let him be neither mine nor yours, but divide him. So the king answered and said, give the first woman the living child and by no means kill him. She is his mother. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had rendered and they feared the king for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. The first time I heard this, I was young and to be honest with you, it rather jolted and shocked me. Even the concept of taking a living child and splitting that child in two. There were other things in this story, the, the two harlots and it was actually being used as a demonstration of the wisdom of Solomon, of how it was a great wisdom that God had given to him. But, and he had asked for wisdom. Think about today. I mean, if there were such a question, it would be a simple test to determine who the mother of that child was. There would never even have to be a consideration such as this. But in that day, the wisdom of God. I also want to touch upon the concept of the two women were harlots. Do you know that God does not hold to our charge how we came into this world? Not even a little bit. He knows and loves us. Jesus went to the cross of Calvary and died for each and every one of us that whomever would believe in him would not perish. How we came into this world, the circumstances around it, are not anything that we ever need to be ashamed of because Jesus paid the price for each and every one of us and loves us and receives us who will come to him as his very own. But the essence here that really cries out to my heart today is the love of a mother for her child. You know, this world is full of such selfishness. The selfishness of people who would say, you know, I want my half, I'll take my half. I, I really don't care as long as I get what I want the way I want it. And really, love is about a life laid down. The mother yearned and loved her child enough that she was willing to give him to another rather than have his life lost. When I consider that, that's, that's love. That's love at the very highest. And of course, she was honored for her, that love. She, was, she received the child back but at the moment she did not know she did not know she only knew that her heart her heart yearned that's a powerful word the longing the love that was in her that's a mother's love that's the love of the father for us praise be to God when I consider that kind of love that's the love of a life laid down Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Isaiah 49, verse 15 says, Can a mother, can a woman forget her nursing child, not have compassion on the son of her womb, or the child of her womb? No. No. My first child was born when I was 15 years old. I birthed her. And she was placed for adoption on the day she was born. That would have been a hard decision. I wasn't in a position to be able to, at that time in my life, to care for, to raise that child in what she needed. And so she was placed for adoption and she was raised by a mother who walked the floor with her when she was being teethed, who was her mother. Yes, I gave her the life and birthed her, but mothering's a lot more than that. Children need to be nurtured, they need to be trained, they need to be taught, they need to be loved. And that was the reason I said, sometimes 
the love of the one who carried and birthed the child is not always the same mother that raises and trains up and loves and nurtures a child to maturity. And we thank God for the mother that carried us and the mother that nurtured us. Sometimes there are many people in our life that come alongside and nurture us to our maturity. They play an important role in our life. They mother us in various ways. And we give thanks and praise to God for them, praise Jesus, because somebody did this for us. And on this day, that's the person and the people that we want to honor God and give thanks to him for and honor them, to honor Mother on this day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Laying down our life for another can mean different things in different circumstances. But the end result in Jesus Christ is the same. It can result in great blessing. Great blessing. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like to close this message with Proverbs, Proverbs 31, 28. give thanks to the Lord for my family, for my children, my many children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. I give thanks and praise to the Lord this day. And I give thanks to the Lord for my mother, my father, my grandparents, my grandmothers. They were um, a powerful influence in my life. And great-grandparents. I, I knew great-grandmothers. I was blessed and fortunate in that. I give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Proverbs, you know, when you think about laying down a life for another, when you, we lay down our life, the Word of God says, you know, it speaks of, in verse 28, Proverbs 31, 28, her children rise up and call her blessed. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Her children rise up and call her blessed. A life laid down, a mother's sacrifices. Probably never in our entire life could we ever really know all of the sacrifices. Perhaps many of them have never been even spoken of. The sacrifices that were made for us, that brought us to maturity. We give thanks and praise to the Lord for the sacrifice of his life laid down for us, his sinless life laid down for us. He laid down his life that we might live. And not just this bios life, but eternal life. And that's the most important thing of all, that Jesus died once for all. He laid his life down. And the most wonderful thing that we can ever do in life, the most important thing, is to believe and receive him as Savior and Lord. And he made it simple. He did it. He did the work. We need only believe, receive, confess with our mouth that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. And he bore our sins. He bore my sin, your sin. And when we ask for forgiveness of sin, we repent and ask him to come into our heart and life and be our Savior and Lord. He takes up residence within us. has a plan for our life. That plan included the, the mother in whose womb you and I were conceived. It included the nurturing and training that we received along the way. Because God has a plan for each of our lives. 
let's receive him into our heart and life fully and completely and want the fullness of everything he has for us because God is good and he knows he th the thoughts he thinks toward us thoughts for good a future and a hope praise be to God happy Mother's Day to our beautiful women we love you we appreciate you and we give thanks and praise to the Lord for you in Jesus' name, amen.